Aloha, I'm Jacob, and I'm the ROV engineering intern, and I am the Atalanta pilot. Aloha, my name is Jaina. I am the video engineer on this watch. Uh, you can do the same thing with those. So the, the buttons that are here are porch gauges, craft, magnum, toolbox, and forward. You actually have more buttons there than I have here. So usually the way we roll is you can have that one, and I have this one we share. We can multitask. So I can also say, uh, yeah, look at the porch, look at the gauges, whatever. There are so many buttons in this room, it's a little overwhelming sometimes. <laughs> but push them all. I still don't know what they all do. You know, one day I'll be like that kid in an elevator and just press all the I random know. buttons and run out. I was in the bridge today and I was like, I was kind of tempted to press these buttons, but I think that would be disastrous maybe. So, <laughs> um, But we'll continue with introductions on the back row. Uh, Elsa, would you like to share? Sure, thanks, Kara, um, Ali, and greetings, everyone. My name is Elsa, and I'm a supporting scientist here on the Nautilus. And when I'm not on, on board, I'm a researcher at the Palau International Coral Reef Center. So I'll pass it uh, to my right to Kara. All right, thanks. Um, so again, my name's Kara. Uh, I'm serving as a science communication fellow aboard EV Nautilus. Um, and sharing some of our um, research stories. And when I'm not on the Nautilus, I'm based in Guam at the Guam Coral Reef Initiative. And I'll pass that on to my right to Hans. Good morning. I'm Hans. I'm an archaeologist and historian for NOAA's Office of National Marine Sanctuaries. And I'm stationed in Honolulu, Hawaii. Upashana. Uh, good morning, everybody. I am Upashana. Uh, I'm a deep sea biologist uh, studying the evolution of deep sea yes, corals, please. and I'm, a, I'm currently uh, a PhD student at the University of Louisiana at Lafayette and the biologist on, uh, on this team. And Taylor Ann? Hello, everyone. I'm Taylor Ann. I am the science manager and data logger on this watch. Uh, looking forward to a good dive. Thanks, everyone. Um, do we know anything about our sampling plan, Taylor Ann? Like, do we still need to gather a bunch of samples or...? Um yeah, so um, I guess whatever um, we're shown by, you know, nature, what we see here tonight, um, we do have our priority list of, of scientists and different uh, organisms that they're interested in studying. Um, but so far we've collected a Niskan sample and a rock um, from when we first started. So. As we travel along, we'll collect more rocks for Val about mm -hmm. every kilometer or so, or after each waypoint, okay. um, so we can get a picture of the history of the seamount. Cool. Thanks. So uh, I have a request. Before we get started, um, I have a horrible time hearing. I've spent too many years on loud boats around loud winches. Can we go through the comms and? Sure. Because uh, unless I got this thing blasted. So some people are like way too loud. Some people are, uh, I can barely hear you. All right, we can try adjusting. Maybe we go through one at a time and yep. I can complain or give kudos as appropriate. You mean measure accurately? Yeah, I tried to do that when we when we did uh, introductions, but I was pressing buttons up here and I failed. <laughs> right, right. So. They are fun to press. Yeah, so, um, and it depends on which ones you're selected to listen, and I don't know, Robert gets it all wonky, I'll blame it on him. So I put everything back to, like, zero or, you know, minus or plus one. And I don't understand if I, for example, if I'm not listening to science left um, and I adjust their volume, nothing happens. But if I'm listening and I adjust their volume, do they go louder or quieter? So I could never work out like why some of them are selected and some of them are not. I play with the buttons and I never... So I've been struggling the last few watches um, to hear who's who's who back there. Okay, do you want to check the, the front row first yeah. and then do the back row? 
Well, I can hear you okay. All right. Can everyone hear Hans? Yes. Yes, yes we can hear Hans. Yeah, Hans is Garen's. Okay, next yes. victim, Garen's. Well, Baron's. That documentarian <laughs> voice. Uh, yeah. Can everyone hear me? Yes. 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 Yeah, I yes. can hear you. You're a little quiet. Hmm. Not for us. I mean, for yeah. me, Mia. She's a good. Mute. She's a good volume. Yeah. So I can, if I have her selected, I can turn her up myself. Okay. Now I get it. And also, it's the only taken me like five yeah, years. For mine, I have to crank up the volume to seven or eight to be able to hear everybody. Yeah. So what station are you? Science right? Science left? Uh, science right. Me? Yeah. yeah. I yes, right. yes, I think I'm science right. <laughs> <laughs> and again, don't ask me left and right questions. <laughs> I get confused. I don't, did you just suggest? So I made the little green light and it blew out my eardrums. Okay. So I green it. is like you can hear. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. you're choosing to hear them. Yeah, yes. but usually you just listen on SPL. Cause mm. So, yeah, a lot of times I get overwhelmed up here and I. Yeah, I think I once you um, set their volumes too, you can turn it off and it'll stay the same. Right. Was that Kakui? No, oh, that, that was Gina. Oh, that was Gina. <laughs> you you sound 10 high. minutes ago. <laughs> you sound very quiet for me. What about now? Can that's, you hear me? that's good. That's yeah. good. Yeah. I'm at um, eight on my volume for everybody. Yeah. Eight. Like for mine, it has to be like between six and eight to be able to clearly hear everybody. If it's below that, uh, I cannot hear certain people. Yeah. Yep. And if everybody needs to adjust their overall volume on the bottom. Um, or one of the knobs that says main volume, yeah. that'll change like the volume overall for everybody, and then you can adjust them there as well. Yeah, well, yeah mine's all the way up, and yeah. I can still not hear her, like Dan. Um, I think maybe Dan's the only one I have a hard time hearing. Oh, okay. I tend to mumble. So I no, I, I, I can understand you mumbling. <laughs> You're just quiet. <laughs> Yep, that's when you'll have to um, hit up to listen to them and then push that dial over to the right, up and down to here. Yeah, I think you can adjust the volume on the individual channels by pressing the toggle left or right. Yeah. yeah. So. Right is up, left is down. Once we get all that right, is there like a, sa a saving for our our watch? or? Nope, if somebody else changes it, you're going to have to so change it again. So we have to do again. this every night? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I can change, um, I say it's like the overall volume of everybody, but if somebody comes in next time and turns everybody down for their watch, then you will have to turn it up again. Yeah, so everyone's different, and uh, part of the issue I have is I have different headphones than the standard high quality ones that are issued. You don't have to flex <laughs> on us like that. <laughs> <laughs> so they're a little flex. louder at first, so I flex. turn it down. <laughs> okay, well, I hope we're better. I Did that so. help? Thank you. All right. Here we go. Uh, can everybody hear Kara? Yeah, am I too loud or too quiet? You're good. I you're sound like too loud to myself. No, okay. you're perfect. No, you're good. You're okay. sounds good. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Sometimes I have a little bit of hard time hear you, hearing your voice. Oh, okay. But now it's fine. It's good? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I also, think one more note I have yeah. for everybody, too, is throughout the watch, if you take a sip of anything, just make yes. sure the mic has yeah. to go pretty close to your face. That's yeah. when it gets hard to hear people. Thank you. Yes, that's important. I tend to. Yeah. Thanks, Jaina, for always handling yeah. all the volume stuff. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, much appreciated. Yeah. yeah. So, Mia, are we still headed to Waypoint Two? I think uh, I see yeah, Waypoint no. One down there. Okay. We're not gonna. Yeah, we're not gonna go on an adventure. We're gonna. We're about 600 meters, I think. 600, 650 meters away from Waypoint Two. Right, just checking where we are between waypoints and moving up this ridge on the southern side. Yeah, I don't know if you can see my screen from back there. It's a yep. bit helpful to see we're in this area where the contour lines are more spread out. Yep. Oh, I, we've does got that high touch pack. Screen? We've got high pack up back here. Yeah, we can see it here as well. Oh, okay, when you okay, so when you put high pack on, they make sure you don't lock me out. Well. Yeah, so it. it you locked me out like that. See that? Yeah. Okay. So when you release it, then I can use it. I don't know who locked you out. It's good now. Okay. So um, 
Anyway, just a quick overview as before we get started. Yeah, so it shouldn't be as, uh, again, it shouldn't be as, uh, according to the contour lines, it shouldn't be as steep as the other dive we had. Okay. But of course, sometimes it's the contour lines of lies, just like the whiteboard of lies. So <laughs> we'll see. And someone just locked me out again. So. Uh, I don't know. Nothing's being touched yeah, back here. Yeah, we are here. not pressing any buttons back Hold here. On. Yeah, we don't have access to high pack. Only viewing. I'm going to release it for a second if everyone's in a good position. High pack just looks like uh, colors and lines to me. I can't make sense of it. This is the first time I've had this happen. Or literally, it looks like a padlock just on my screen. Yeah, I have not seen that before either. Might have to wake up <laughs> Matt because <laughs> it's not functioning now. Okay, let us know how we can help, like, if you want me to go get mad or anything. If you, um, control X on your keyboard. So, uh, hit the disconnect button, so hit monitor, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so the KVM, the buttons are controlled by um, a Raspberry Pi, which can, like me, get a little overwhelmed, and it will uh, basically ignore you for a while. So uh, those button presses that you're doing will stack, and sometimes, like five minutes later, they'll it'll all of a sudden find its brain, and it'll do a bunch of weird stuff. If you go to that computer, whatever it is, HIPAC survey, I believe. Uh, so, I think your keyboard's controlling the upper monitor. There it is. So if you click in the in the monitor anywhere, or hit Mon Center once. So do control X again. And then find uh, high pack survey. Uh, no, it should be high pack one or two, but go back to high pack survey for me. So they're not all blacked out, so they're not, uh, when they're all blacked out, they're basically duck on Dublin and so you can try and disconnect on whatever one you think it is I'm not sure which one it is that's one of the high pack ones that's definitely one of the high pack ones like that KVM has gone wonky. Uh, we can try and bring it up on another screen. So you can try uh, on left at the risk of using losing the uh, ROV screen. So it's when you see the little thing going up there, it's it's uh, waiting. Yeah, it's very slow. So still no mouse. Yeah, Matt's. You're gonna have to get Matt to uh, reset it. I don't know. He can reset it from his uh, lobby. So can we get ROV nav back on here? I just messaged him. Uh, does anyone know what cabin he's in? Not sure. It's on the w yeah. Okay. So but I would 
We know which cabin Dan's in, so Dan would know the cabin Matt's in. I would, um, I would just not do anything on that screen for a few minutes, and it might just come back because this one's working. Yeah, we're going north. What is it, Barry? Three five zero. Yeah, I think if you give it a minute, it might just heal itself. Thank you. It might have sorted itself out, but yeah, I definitely want him to take a look so we don't waste the whole time. <laughs> yeah, that sounds reasonable. Yeah, yeah, no worries. We need to be sure. Sorry for the technical difficulties. We've got time. We've got all the time in the world. <laughs> <laughs> we know we're headed to... 350 for the next uh, yeah 650 meters so yeah, I think we can we can go there I think we can go there I think so 50 meters well, I'll try 50 and see what yeah, uh, let's try out let's start out with baby steps and just so I yeah. See how it goes, and that will take me a while to get the tri trim styled and all that. All righty, we're underway. So, so far I don't see any red in the sonar, so uh, pr probably won't be as nervous as I was on the last dive. When I see that solid red line up there, it's uh, when we can get into a situation where we can't recover by lifting Atalanta up. Yeah, you, you'll see a hard red line, and then there'll be nothing behind it but shadow. So that means the beam of the sonar looks out at, I don't know, some eye like this, right? It doesn't look up too far or down too far. So if it's a hard red line and shadow behind it, that means it's a cliff as far as Atlanta can see. But when you see it broke up like that, that means that it's getting sonar returns all the way out, you know, 40, 60, 80 meters out. Yeah, so we typically run with uh, Atlanta at 20, uh, Herc, Mesotech as we call it, at 10, so it's looking out 50. So Atlanta sees 100 meters out, Herc sees 50 meters out on that one, and then over here this one's typically set to 20 meters. And I'll sometimes, if we're on the cliff, like the other night, I'll reduce that one just so I can see how far away I am from the from the vertical. But yeah, the whole last uh, dive for most of it till the end, we had you know that hard red line there. Yeah, which, you know, if we have a hard red line at 20 meters, that means we're blind beyond 20 meters. That's why we were doing the 10 meter moves. And, and then there was, you know, all the pinnacles and the walls coming in at 90 degree. We had a lot of 90 degree, you know. So we had walls on the side of us as well as in front of us. There was just no, no escape route. We're typically, not 100%, but typically when it's like that, we can, you know, if we get in trouble and the boat runs away or something, we can just lift up Atlanta and find clear water. A what? Uh, I take offense to the term pilot when it comes to ROV operator. 
typically pilots don't, you know, have a multimeter in one hand, a wrench in the other with hydraulic oil dripping down their elbows and the smell of burnt electronics in their nostrils. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a navigator here, but then I'm a mapper downstairs. So. Well, you guys I are a jack of all trades. I was a technician long before I was a ROV operator. Manipulator operator. Matt is getting woken up at the moment and will be up as quick as possible. Thank you so much. Thank yeah, you. no problem. Thanks, Thank Taylor. Thank you. <laughs> so, have we have we got a rock to start the dive? Yeah, Val checked in, said she'd taken a sample not too far ago. So she said, you know, up above twenty two hundred, get to twenty one hundred, take another one. All right. Not that one. That one is too big. <laughs> Apparently, well, I don't know about the sample they took. It sounded large. <laughs> what happened to the grapefruit size? <laughs> we don't know where Val's getting her grapefruits. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's why she's got a rock saw. She has to say grapefruit size because that's you know, right. what she's supposed to say. But you see uh. her eyes light up when <laughs> pull out like that yeah. Yeah. watermelon size rock. <laughs> yeah. Year before last, we had 843 pounds worth of rocks on one expedition. Wow. That is absurd. <laughs> and Steve can tell you it was absurd. He made me <laughs> carry him off the ship. <laughs> you and your rocks <laughs> are heavy. It's like a whole pallet. We had to get the forklift to wow. move them on. Yeah, we were. Geologist heavy on that. What were you guys doing? Making rock wall? Uh, no, they were basically doing the same thing as here. They were trying to determine if the uh, sea mounts come from the uh, hot spot that makes Hawaii, or if they were, you know, older. Plate tectonic stuff. There's a word I'm looking for. It's in the dive plan that escapes me at the moment. To both my figure. Yeah, thank you. I guess we have um, a viewer who um, yeah. tuned in for that uh, previous expedition with so many rocks, and Good they said she called it a tomorrow's problem size rock <laughs> because <laughs> of the size. <laughs> yeah, my problem. Oh. <laughs> Did y'all see problem. me carrying that rock in last night? No, I had to do a ship to shore. That was a heavy piece of rock. It was worth it, though. It's really cool. Yeah. Oh. Did she cut it open yet? The no, big one we got? no. They're doing that tomorrow afternoon. Oh, yeah. I did see in the ship to shore screen, like we have a view of the wet lab, and I was like, why is that rock being latched down? And I guess it's just too big to fit yeah. in your container, right? <laughs> yeah, and don't want something that heavy rolling around. Yeah. <laughs> So we did adjust our ballast strategy by, uh, we put two uh, 
two more seven pound, I think seven or nine pound dive weights on. Thank you, Jacob Bonney, for that. Master Jake, our ballast All master. Right. Ballast master. Yeah, we usually try and, uh, if we can, have uh, one person kind of be the ballast master. Doesn't always work out that way, but uh, Jake's the only one of us that can read a spreadsheet, so <laughs> he was the one. Is Hercules always a little bit positive? Yeah, we shoot for uh, 40 to 50 pounds positive buoyancy. Yeah. That was a question I got from my hometown fourth grade class. They asked a lot of good questions. About the buoyancy of Herc? Yeah, and uh, the interaction was a surprise. They didn't know it was happening, so I was really impressed. Yeah, it's not like the teacher prepared them with, you know, any information about the ROV or anything. They were just, like, very curious, and I think they also asked, like, about the pressure, and yeah. Wow, so that's cool. nice. I was not thinking about ballast and pressure in fourth grade. <laughs> <laughs> well, what were you thinking about? What I was going to eat when I got home. I think uh, I think we can keep on trucking. Me, yeah. if you want to, you can try a 50 meter move. Yep. Let's see how that goes. Bridge, bridge nav. Can we set five zero at three five zero? Thank you. These are all bamboo coral. Yes, the bigger fans look like bamboo corals, uh, even though from the branching patterns there can be multiple tags of bamboo corals. And there was something smaller and more uh, pinkish, which is something else, but I'm just waiting for us to sort out the technical issues. Go Roger. Oh, we're good. We can do whatever. Yeah. Oh. Yep. That's more uh, big picture. Long okay. term, we know where we're going for the next uh, 600 meters, so okay, okay, it's at least a half an hour, right? Yeah, so uh, right at the center, yeah, I think we're good for 50 meters. That looks like a black coral, uh, probably the genus Hexabathes, and push in uh, there, Janet. Yeah. How can Good. you tell Thanks. the difference uh, between keep the lasers in the picture a little for me? And uh, bathypathies and alternate so bathies. Yes. Those so are the only three I know that look like <laughs> this morphology. Yeah, I'm gonna check the alternate bathies right now. Bathy I'll, I'll, yes, bathypathies is um so for bathypathies so the Branches, they, they are just uh, two branches coming out from each point. They don't uh, split into smaller branches or you don't have more than two. Alternate pathies generally has, well, what I have seen is uh, kind of a more rounded structure as if like the branches curve underneath and form like a balloon. And if it's in the family uh, Cleidopathidae, which has the genus uh, 
hexapathies, then sometimes we okay, have going. more than two branches coming out from the central axis and they split. But I'm not sure which genus, uh, in which genus it splits like that. Uh, so can be in hexapathies, but definitely in the family cladopathidae. That's what I would call it. Uh, Thank you. Yeah, that was helpful. Thank you. There's also there's a yeah. That's a very healthy community. Yeah. Uh, will it be possible to zoom in on this? Sure. Because these all look bamboos, but we're definitely seeing different colors and this has a different branching pattern. Some of them are more pinkish. Also, or it can be, if this is difficult, we can have a look at this because I would also want to have a look at the pink Roger. ones. I don't know if I can get stable for a zoom there because I'm uh, okay. basically looking at Atlanta, so it's pulling on my tail. Oh, oh, yes, I understand. I understand. I'll give it a go here. As the ship gets closer, I'll get a little more. Okay. Uh, yeah. The big colony, which is on the right, we can clearly see the thick nodes yes. in between the internodes. So that, yes. that tells us that it's a bamboo coral. And the branching on the right one, which is on the right, seems to be internodal from a distance. Uh, okay, I'm landed there. We can zoom in on whatever you want. Okay. So we have another 20 meters. Uh, is this good? Do you have enough tether? Yeah, Rich. So any one of the pink fans and the whiter, more whiter fan that okay. we have. In the Go center. ahead. This is where I saw you circle, so that's all Yes, I yes, yes. This looks something else, right? It doesn't look... Yeah, like I'm not seeing nodes the, anywhere. Yeah. It could be a primnoid. It looks, yeah, it looks more primnoid in terms of the branching pattern. Is there also a candelabra primnoid? I think so. Okay. I think so. I, I'll check in a moment. Uh, but the way it's so uniform, it looked more primnoidy from a distance, and I definitely don't see the nodes and inter nodes. Or maybe the, what is what's happening? What do you think here, Taylor? And would those are nodes, right? The blacks. Is that the full zoom? I can't say if I can see nodes or not. They look like yeah, shadows. Yeah, we to can. Me. Uh, I can try and get a little closer. If you go wide for me. So they're like darker patterns, at least in that part. The pink ones look more pedagogia like Yeah. The quintessential bubblegum coral color. Is the white one in, in front of us the same? Uh, I think so. Yeah, I think so. We can look, have a, we can zoom on the one which is in front also. You're talking about this one? Yes. Yes. This or the one which is hanging in the corner, whichever okay. is easier to Go zoom ahead. in on. Zoom there. I don't know that I see them. Yeah, I don't. I kind of see them in the colony which is at the back at the moment or maybe so we don't have a lot of time left here atlantis uh okay yes us. yes yes yeah we so can move wanna, on yes we can carry see on the other pink one there? yeah the pink one real quickly that looks like a classic baragorgia or hemicorallium i can't tell the difference between the two unless you poke it which we don't want to do we don't want to do that i don't, I don't have time sorry though. yeah no 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 we did uh, that 50 meter move it looks a little more okay, fragile than paragorgids. No? But I could be wrong. Not sure. The other thing that uh, I think Asako or someone was pointing out that in paragorgia, the polyps around the axis, uh, so if it's a hemicorallium or a corallium, we just see two polyps. Uh, 
mm. rising from the branch. Whereas in uh, Paragorgia, the polyps are more arranged around the okay, the entire axis. axis. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what I was trying uh, to see. Under, yeah, so but I wasn't do the sure. Full, uh, delta, twenty something meters. Well, we're going to have to make up a little bit of time here. It's okay. Mm -hmm. Atalanta is constantly swinging this uh, depth here. Pendulum. The pendulum problem. Uh, we can do smaller steps if you. Uh, no, I mean in the future if we want to do smaller steps. So what that does is um, we can, if we're just doing a, like a 20 meter step, we can let the step run out and Atalanta will only move, swing in that 20 meters and we don't get the big layback like we do with the 50 meters. So if we want to spend more than 60 seconds or so looking at something or sample then we can if we do a 50 meter move we get a larger layback and even if you stop the ship Atalanta will continue that 50 meter that that it gets more of a pendulum effect and there's more of a swing in and then Atlanta gets too far past us and will pull us off Yeah, the, the white one that we were looking, we were zooming into, looks more like the Calyptrophora primnoid, but I thought I had seen one of those during the earlier ships as well, but Virginia said that when they had zoomed in, uh, they were bamboos, so I'm not sure. It's uh, <coughs> also the the other shift was probably doing 50 meter moves, but they have geologists, so they're not you know as interested in the uh, in the fauna as uh, this watch is. So typically on a on a sea mound, high density sea mound, with a biologist or two driving, uh, we do 20 meter moves especially when the when it's dense like this yeah Is it, no, I thought for a second that there was a sea star. Is that an egg case down there? The lower right brownish corner? Could be. This? Oh. Yeah, I'm not sure. Could just be a rock and Do you want to zoom? Absolutely, if we can. A quick zoom, maybe, mm -hmm. if possible. Yeah, well, let me get a little closer first. And, and we have a black coral by it as well. Wow, ah, get a two for. Okay, you can push in a bit there for us. It looks just a little bit broken. Spine? Yeah, spines oh, were dead. Spine. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Uh, it's one of the. Uh, can we also quick zoom on the white Down here? corals? Yes, that were uh, hanging. Yeah, the ones on the edge. If possible. If not, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh. at the base, probably. The lower one here? Yeah. yeah. So that's a nice overhanging. We can see even bamboos in the background. Okay. Yeah, that's a bamboo coral. That is clearly a bamboo coral. This one. Clearly a bamboo coral. <laughs> it's, it's so clear even I can see it. <laughs> 
That's okay, you can go wide. Thank you. What is that? Thank just a you. sedimented rock there under there? No. Just the one altered rock? The lighter brown? Yeah. I, yeah. yeah. It's, uh, yeah. I don't know if I touched there or not. I touched somewhere, obviously. We saw the... Nothing fell off, though, so <laughs> that's good. No. I saw some debris raining yeah. down from the bumper. I wasn't uh, watching in Atlanta. <laughs> Okay, so we're kind of on par with Atalanta, 10 meters off to the uh, port side of it. So I need to get back out in my happy spot. Before we move. You know the black coral that we just saw, that we saw previously as well? I think that is a parantipathies. Because if I'm, now that I'm looking closely at an image of parantipathies, there the branches are splitting at the end. That's what it looks like. I tend to uh, follow the rock feature here as opposed to, like I could go out, you know, get in the happy spot right away. But yeah, plus, I mean, it's more interesting on the rock features. Usually, and also it gives us the opportunity to get closer, especially in a densely populated area. Mm -hmm. You know, I can get close to this animal here without, you know, mowing the lawn out there. That's such high densities of bamboo corals. Any ideas of why we would find so many more bamboo corals here as opposed to other um, places we've been? No, you know, uh, I mean, I've also seen this in other dives where when you come across a particular kind of coral, you see a lot of them in one place. And we have been seeing that during our watches as well. I think it was the last time where we also found a patch where there was a lot of bamboo corals here, but these are much bigger fans. It probably has got to do with what uh, nutrients are being brought in, larval dispersal, uh, water current, but I honestly don't know why uh, at similar depths we would have different taxa assemblages. Yeah, it's Hercules. For example, in during the last dive, even though we were at the similar depth, I was wondering that, I think after one of our shifts, that we were we didn't see black corals. I, I think it's at Hercules. Least during our watches, I don't recall seeing any black coral, but Should that is Hercules. technically an ideal depth for many of the black coral tags. So, but on this seamount, we are seeing a lot of uh, black corals. So one area of study that is uh, one area of research which is very interesting and which people, scientists are still trying to figure out is why we okay. see such... I'm in my happy spot, you can... Uh, differences funny. Yes, from please. sea mount to sea mount and how recruitment and dispersion happens from one sea mount to sea mount. And we haven't been able to understand that yet. I feel like we need so much more data for that. Yes. Right? And it's just uh, such intricate patterns. We try to understand a lot of things, but probably we'll never really know what happens because it's very it's not a single factor. There are so many factors involved. Have we been able to look at deep sea coral larvae even? Because I know for shallow yeah. corals, we actually can like gather the larvae with nets and like, you know, have them in the lab and rear them and observe them. No, not exactly like that. Uh, at least I'm not aware of that. And I don't know exactly how they will be collecting the larvae when it comes to deep sea. Or at least I... Uh, that could be only when they, they spawn, right? They yes. collect it only yeah. at a certain time, and otherwise, uh, I would guess, you cannot? Yeah, I think for shallow water, um, oh. actually I was able to experience it recently, and like it was kind of timed within a certain window according yes. to the moon, yes. right? And then they all released, and then... Um, that the water actually smelled like kind of fishy. Yeah. <laughs> so, but th for the deep sea, it would be so difficult, right? Yeah. Like all the engineering involved to try to try see to that connect, exactly. and just find out when. Do we know? Like. Yeah, you know, that's uh, what I was uh, about to mention that 
I remember reading some article or some paper or another one of those uh, things that I have heard from my advisor that for some of the deep sea corals they have also observed the similar lunar pattern that we see with I the really shallower corals that and that is just an evolutionary signal because uh, like cycadian rhythm and everything is genetic and so those rhythms they are they have if they have evolved so they have those characteristics have remained in these as well because it's not that uh, when we look at the evolution it's not that oh the shallow waters evolved in a certain way and that the deep ones evolved separately no many a times it's interspersed that okay and there are theories and there have been studies that uh, hypothesize that what has happened is because of climate change or glaciation and deglaciation several times the shallower corals they have they were completely destroyed and every time then again they came back from the deeper oceans because the deep sea kind of acts as a repository or the museum or the relic right right so yeah, yeah you know I, I talked about the last glacial maximum uh, yes but that's there have been multiple glacial maximums So there have been multiple stands of ocean level. Yeah. Yeah. I'm surprised my first guess, I mean, you know, I only make guesses, but <laughs> would, would be that, you know, the, the moon timing for spawning of deep corals would not be it. I mean, there's no light down here, but yes. to maintain that timing, if they, if they did, you know, remembered in a sense from, yes. from their shallow water yes. experience that's yes. amazing yes because it's uh it's it's the, these signaling uh, uh, maybe we can pick up the because i'd love to have yeah. this conversation more but maybe we'll pick it up once dan is yes, in a good space oh yeah. sorry yeah no just want to make sure the front row can do all right we we turned you off there oh okay, okay. <laughs> we checked out we're having our own technical conversation up here. Okay, yeah, I was hearing yeah. some stuff up there and I just wanted to make sure you had your time to um, get everything organized. Typically we do not. <laughs> <laughs> um, but sorry, so um, we were talking about the circadian rhythm? Yes, right? yes. So, um. circadian rhythm, rhythm uh, for any organism, and the, however much it has been studied, it's at a genetic level, these signal links. So it's not the it is uh, like okay we are seeing something and then responding to it but these responses responses and these cycle cycles are have been embedded at a genetic level where we work like that for so uh, so i think those signalings uh, pathways have been retained in the deep sea corals we still don't understand how why but these are just conjectures to a large extent but apparently they follow that as well and they have seen observed uh, not probably at like 5000 meter depths but deep oceans spawning events and for the deep wow. sea corals we I had no idea there was like multiple um like yeah. the deep sea act as a reservoir. That's yes, so amazing. It does. Yeah, it does. I'll see if I can try and find the paper or the article that talked about it mm -hmm. tomorrow. But yeah. yeah. And Hans, you were saying about the lunar cycle, right? Like, it's kind of surprising. Absolutely. That they still follow that in the deep sea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It just baffles our mind to even think that it follows a phenomenon that it can't even observe or does right. it. Right, yeah. And I'm sure there's like chemicals in the water too that yes. they yes. trace. And I don't think even for the shallower corals, we still understand why and how right. they correlate the with the lunar cycles. We just know that they do and these, this happens. So. 
got to do with tides, water movement, ocean currents. So there's a lot of, like you said, the chemical signature to the water also related to the lunar cycle. Right. I feel like their circadian rhythm is so much stronger than mine right now after yes. <laughs> being on the watch <laughs> schedule. Like, well, I have no circadian rhythm. Oh, I absolutely. <laughs> what is that? Messing with it. <laughs> But it's really interesting too, because at our uh, center we have an aquarium and we have corals inside, and they also, even though they're inside the tank, yeah. they also spawn at the same time as the wow. corals. Uh, we have corals surrounding the center in the ocean as well, and they're all they all spawn yeah, at the same time. Yeah, it's so it's fascinating. Wow, that's that's so cool. Yeah, I think with the natural system, any it doesn't have to be just biological systems, be it physics, chemistry, like, I think it's always that the more we discuss at a final level, we really understand that we don't know anything. We are still <laughs> trying to figure out the most basic things and we'll never be able to understand how, the, how nature works, how the world works. And one of the interesting things that I think about sometimes for like our pursuit of science is that it's not that it's any single lifetime that we're understanding these. It's because of, um, you know, centuries of scientists and researchers um, making observations and recording them that we're able to then um, know what we know now. So even what we're doing now will be preserved for the future. So that's pretty cool. Publication. Oh, I don't know about that. <laughs> well, I, mean. I guess yes, you're right. Publication. That's what <laughs> the practical publication side of they, yeah. Well, they they archive the material. Yes. You know, I mean, if you make observations and ultimately it's not archived and and passed on, then you might as well have not made observations. Mm. But you're right. You're right. Over time. I was thinking more of our conversation we had on the last watch about how our, um, the samples we collect go to these huge li libraries oh, yeah. and museums. Um, but yes, I know also the added human labor of making sense of those samples um, goes into that as well, Han. So that's a good point. Yeah, I mean, even in my historical research, I remember really being interested in the early descriptions of coral polyps. They were sea insects. Oh wow! Yes. You know, I mean, you they know, were also plants. Considered yeah. as plants. Yeah, but they were these these, the, and the insects built the islands, and so they're they're kind of on the right track. Yes. But, you know, these 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 insects were out there building yeah. islands in the Pacific, and it was so exciting mm. to tell people back in the yeah. East Coast. Wow. I remember reading a description of a sea pen. I forget for what or, I think uh, when they were first observed, by some people. Again, documentations don't prove that they were the actual first observations. They were the first documented observations. Right. Mm -hmm. So uh, it said there's a worm like uh, a, a worm, a worm that stays in the sediment and looks like a tree. <laughs> so they don't. What? Uh, what was it? So and we've come a long way, and uh, standardizations are important mm. because. Even, for example, we we kind of joke about it. People who ever work with taxonomy, when you look at older descriptions, many a times they're describing colonies as reddish pink, pinkish orange, <laughs> reddish pink, or in pinkish, uh, pinkish red. And how <laughs> do you know what right. colors they are? And they're two <laughs> different species. Yeah. So there's a, there was used to be a lot of... Uh, 
purse. I don't know. It wasn't standardized, right? Yeah. The color can be something which is very difficult to standardize. Yeah. Especially in preserved specimen. And even when we see something in situ and when we bring it up, it's collected, they look very different. Mm -hmm. Right. So and a lot yeah. of those really old records, we didn't have photographs of stuff. No, so it's no, just sketched. sketches. And they're such yeah. beautiful sketches. And sometimes those sketches have more details than the photographs because mm -hmm. somebody has had painstakingly looked at every minute detail and sketched them and made them. And at the same time, because those kinds of descriptions were made, people understood that, no, we can't use these characteristics. We need to have characteristics that can, can be compared across the table so that wherever somebody is, when I say it is a reddish pink, you would know what it is. That's a problem. Color can cannot be used. And color degrades over time when you keep them in ethanol. Oh, so that's, that's how true. you come yeah. up and improve and work on whatever techniques we are using now. It's always building upon, like you said. Yeah. So it's it's an interesting, like historically, the process is also interesting. Right. But also looking back and... Yeah, and some of my work with the mangroves and mm -hmm. seagrasses in Guam too, it's also been like asking people, you know, that oral tradition kind exactly. of history and asking them like, you know, what changes have you seen and how has, what did this area used to look like? And um, also going into like photo, aerial photo archives from yes. around like World War II and seeing like how the um, water, coastline has yeah, how the coastline changed. was different, the those changed. coastal habitats. And um, a lot of them look pretty different. Uh, so it's Absolutely. pretty amazing. So in the chat, we have um, a shout out to Opashana for being a fountain of knowledge not. and a I pleasure to listen no. to. I agree yes, with that. And it has, been, it has been a pleasure this cruise to share a watch with her because I feel like I'm constantly learning new things from yeah. her. No, we're very lucky to have a yeah. on our watch. And I feel like I'm in a, a master course for <laughs> deep, deep ocean we're, biology. We're in uh, definitely bio but, 404 but, for but, sure. <laughs> but also, you know, your, your passion for the subject comes out. Yeah. And, yeah. You know, even I remember years ago when I was working the, the night shift in restaurants, I would put on some uh, some talk show. I would have put this talk show on. Just <laughs> listened, listened and yeah. learned about deep ocean biology and, you know, cleaned up the restaurant. <laughs> That's thank Rosen, you so much. Rosenthal's yes. Deli in Berkeley, <laughs> California. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, thank you so much. But I guess because I work in this field, I also realize that, I mean, I'm aware that I really don't know a lot about this field. I mean, I hope that over time, as I spend more time in this field and gather more experience, I'll, I'll know. I'll have better knowledge about what these corals are, their processes, but I, I, it's, it's a matter of practice. It's yeah. just that. Well, your That's knowledge is impressive. Yeah, you're a PhD student and you already have this much knowledge, so <laughs> yeah. I can only imagine what you're going to be like in the future. <laughs> um, so yeah, you're doing great. It's learning a lot from you over here. And I um, think one yeah. of the things I really enjoy about working with you and um, your commentary is that if you don't know something, you'll say that. And there's actually nothing wrong with that. No, and, um, absolutely. We know that the strength in our exploration is that we're sharing things that we don't know. We're going into the unknown. So that's just the nature of what we're doing. So I think that's really, that's also one thing that makes you such a pleasure to work with too. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And you know the best part is that because we are having these conversations, it makes me also think in different directions. Mm. Because 
you guys' perspectives are coming up, the questions that are coming up, because otherwise we get holed in uh, working just on the questions and the projects that right. we work on and don't uh, explore so much around it because it's not possible also. I think that's why I, like, over the last couple of years, because my Irishship has been with Okeanos, that's the part that I've enjoyed a lot because apart from concentrating just on my research, it has allowed me to be involved in these explorations and the whole community level conversations, listening to other people talk about these, these topics. Yeah, and I feel like that's a type of wisdom as well, being able to listen and like, like you said, like admit um, if you don't know something. Oh yeah, after I. <laughs> so. <laughs> and working with the onshore team of scientists, that's yes, been absolutely. really great. Yeah. And this is the great project like, I've been asking Asako and Tina, who are mostly online during our watches, uh -huh. how do I differentiate between these two right. groups? Because sometimes, you know, it's like I know that, okay, this looks fami familiar or not, but other than that, what are the characteristics? Because they have worked in these fields for so long. And if my advisor was here, he would have pointed out, no, there are actually probably six species of bamboo corals or one. And then, because that's, then he would have contributed. But for me, it's just bamboo corals and probably different kinds. So it's it's been an it's been a learning experience it has been a great learning experience for me being here yeah we're really happy to have you here yeah. thank you <laughs> Are we in a position to zoom and look at colonies? Uh, are we in a position to uh, zoom in on any of the corals? Okay. Okay. Uh, in that case, uh, since all of these here look kind of similar fans, we can zoom in on any which is uh, convenient. Yeah, I usually catch that uh, yellow circle out of the corner of my eye. Oh, okay. okay. No matter what the chatter okay. is, and okay. I'll, I'll just kind of automatically uh, land and zoom in on that if I can. Okay, great. Thank you. That's my cue. Then we'll start drawing on the screen, like drawing little animals and flowers on the screen. <laughs> I think the board also has an option for arrows. <laughs> yes, but I prefer the drawing because it's squiggly line. Yeah, I ignore everything except for a yellow circle this way. <laughs> Oh, more than something my little in the one that is in front of is also probably different. If this we can one? have a yeah, look at that, okay. and if then I could the land without running it over. I'll struggling here and I have to come around to well what I'm watching there me is then uh, Atlanta position relative to Hercules so regardless of what's left on the vessel move Atlanta's gonna you know move keep moving for the time we're gonna be here that's why I like my little 10 meter boxes. Okay, you can uh, full zoom there. Turn some lights on for you. 
Huh? Sorry. Okay, um, uh, one. That is a bamboo coral. Can we look at any one of the branching points just to uh, check whether it's a nodal or an internodal branching? Internodal branching. But, uh, what you want to see there? Yes, yes, thank you. We can see how one of the branches had broken off uh, at, w at one of the nodes. And yes, that's beautiful. That's great. That's good. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, you wanted to see something else here too? Yes, one of the bigger or wider fat. Uh, sorry, before we zoom in, uh, I want to look at this colony but from a distance so that uh, we can have an idea about the number of branches it has. The one here. Okay. There's a big anemone on the sea floor. Okay, you can zoom in there. Okay, one, right. two, three, four. We probably five. have uh, about 30 seconds left on this spot before we need to move. Okay, yes, we can. Are you good? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Roger. Can get to do a quick flyby zoom here, and then then we're out of here. We're gonna need to come up the wall. Okay. Yes, absolutely. Go ahead. These look like nodal branching, right? No. Thank you. Right, Thank take you. a uh, DSC if you want. Oh, we we gotta go. Seemed like internodal to internodal, me, like just yeah. after the node. Just after branched. the node, yeah. yes. So that red wall of death that I was uh, mentioning earlier. So now you see the red wall, and it's all a shadow behind that. Oh. Yeah. So. That's interesting. I don't. Yeah. We we can't tell how tall that wall is. Yep. Oh. There's some tricky navigation. Yes. It also is interesting how those tracks or those crevices, I don't want to use terms can, uh, which I don't know the me. meaning of. But, yeah. I mean, if it was land, it would look like, oh, small streams have flown. Oh, well, fractures. Yeah. yeah. They're fractures. So, oh. a lot of times, as soon as he comes up, even, would you come up? Five meters there? 10 meters, so the red now goes away and we can yeah. see over the top of the wall, so we know we got a little breathing space, so. Yeah. On, the, on the last dive, when we would do that, it would remain red. Red. Yeah, for quite a while. So they were, they were steeper, uh, steeper verticals. That were. But I'm completely out of the box now, so I'm off to the, uh, I'm off to the west. Yeah. I think it'll get better as you move north here, but again, sometimes these contours lie. <laughs> yeah, I've got a little history with those contours. <laughs> yeah, and then... And this reminds me of Volcanoes National Park and the pillow lavas and the way the fracturing patterns go and how the tops of pillow lavas can, can, can fracture open, okay. revealing a kind of a, a, a pit or a, a look into the cross section, the interior. 
Wow, that sounds amazing. Yeah. That's the one on Big Island? Big Island, yep. Yeah, I've been there too. Oh, yeah? That's amazing. Yeah. Wow. It's awesome. So, in this case, we have a wall coming in at a 45 and a point there off to our left, which, uh, depending on whether Jacob changes his heading or not. Is that an enemy down there? Yes, yes. No, I don't always do a, a 90 degree uh, a gross move because it takes forever and it doesn't always behave like that. Go, You can zoom in on that guy. We're light years away, but it's... Uh Sorry, I'm not going to be able to zoom for one second. I just had a computer restart over here. Roger. And I need to do some stuff with that real quick. We're trying to decide what we want to do here. So my my typical go to my instinct is to uh, climb directly up the wall. So uh, I would usually, yeah, I would have uh, Jacob bring his head to the left a little bit, twenty degrees maybe, three hundred. Sometimes I wing it and I just, you know, look at his heading and take off 20 degrees or whatever. The uh, for sure way to do it is to have him change his heading. So now he's looking perpendicular to the wall. So I would grab that Argus 300 heading and if we move that, then we go right up the wall. If we move on our original, towards our waypoint, we kind of crab up the wall. Yeah, so if it's a somewhat benign uh, slope, we can crab walk it and it's not a big deal. If it's uh, radical, you know, vertical, then we turn and go up the vertical because uh, where it was challenging the other night we couldn't crab walk because there was 90s right so we had a red wall here and a red wall here so we had to pick one or the other and in this case I would say dealer's choice you'll get better uh, video and it's easier to manage going right at the wall and going up because Atlanta can see Herc and Herc can then kind of zigzag as we're going up stay on the on the cool stuff if we're crab walking I, I'm basically committed to yeah and then I have to fly the ROV sideways because if we're crab walking my heading looks like that so you you don't see everything off to the right. It's, you know, a big third of the screen is black. And then if we're crabbing and I'm going up and I have this kind of heading where I can see, then I have to move the ROV sideways where I can't see because we don't have good cameras off the side of this vehicle. So in a super dense area like this, I'm likely to, you know, 
mow the lawn of a thousand year old forest, which is typically not cool. So in this case, I would pick the 300 and uh, do a step that way and see what happens. I like, you know how we all take records, like highlights? I like how uh, Taylor and your like records are yeah. so precise, like exactly what we're looking at. And then I take What's records that? for like visuals. So I wrote like... Yeah, I'm waiting for you to move the ship 20 meters coral, at uh, 300. Tall coral forest looks kind of spooky. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> that is a scientific observation. <laughs> But it definitely looks like a little more spooky than the previous seamount, right? Oh, yeah. It does, it does. <laughs> like these corals are still alive. Mm -hmm. They're just like really tall and narrow and kind of more pale, right? Yeah, some of them uh, towards the lower parts of the colonies which are lacking the polyps of the tissues. But oh, most yeah. of them are overall alive. Sorry, you were saying something else? No, no, sorry. Yeah, there there seems to be a lot of also scattered fallen yeah, uh, skeletons yeah. in yeah. the yeah. area where there might be more sedimentation. Right. I don't know if that is why they're not doing so well, yeah, um, or yeah. what would have caused them to what fall over. Have, yes. mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Fall over sometimes. Maybe it's because of their own weight. Weight. Probably if there's a strong current in these places. Yeah. If you just recruit in a, a bad exactly, spot, it's just yeah. a bad spot. Yeah. You're seeing a lot of uh, broken branches, but again, if you look at the live colonies, many of them are missing branches. Mm -hmm. I mean, overall they're alive, but yeah. there's broken branches here and there. Sometimes can be, oh, what oh. is that? Oh, a fish. Um, okay. It looks I don't know what that was. Or, oh. oh. I don't know what oh. that. Or maybe he's just, <laughs> that's how he it swims. It swims, <laughs> and it's baffled by the Going light. with the flow. <laughs> No starfish feeding off of this. No. Maybe not enough no. for them. No. Mm, yeah, we haven't seen as many um, echinoderms like no. we often do. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, it seems very barren, this landscape. Yeah. It's kind of like wintertime seamount. Another <laughs> seamount was like spring <laughs> it blooming. Come down. So uh, many colors and everything. And five. we had that one spot which had the pink paragorgia or coralidae, hemichoralidae. Atlantis just starting to move there. So. You know, in other uh, sea mounts in the Pacific, there have been observations of just bamboo corals like oh, this. Oh, yeah. okay. So this is like not rare necessarily. Like there's other sea mounts that are just yeah. dominated by one type. It is parts of sea mounts. Or parts of sea parts mounts, of right? Sea mounts or yeah, some landscapes like that. Yeah. Again, I guess everything in the deep sea can be called rare and not rare. <laughs> <laughs> this is definitely more sedimentation than we we've, we've seen in other locations. Exactly. Mm -hmm. the, the last sea mount had more rocks, exposed rocks right. and boulders, and this the last one sea mount was more vertical. Yeah. So it's more. Yeah, so I guess if it's more flat too, it's more like the sediment can land on it better. Mm -hmm. Settle on it better. Yeah, yeah, settle on it better. Also, it's on, like, difficult for me to gauge these angles and everything. But I don't know about that, different. Taylor. And my computer monitor seems to get as much dust as my keyboard. <laughs> <laughs> Down with that, that that's, that's a scientific observation. <laughs> <laughs> I'll write that as an engineering note. <laughs> but definitely the habitat looks different. Mm -hmm. Right. But that was a good point you made, Upashana. Like, that's just a portion of the sea map that we saw, yes, um, on the previous dive. And looking at our map today also, we're just going up like one ridge out of yeah. like several ridges. So. We're hiking up a mountain trail in the dark with a flashlight. Yeah, <laughs> and this exactly. this path this path that we're taking is um, if you compare it to the left and the right side, it's 
it is drastically different. So, okay. It, again, if these are accurate, <laughs> if it's not a contours, not contours of lies. Mm -hmm. <laughs> are we on the left side right now? So we are a little bit on the left side, if you can see over my shoulder, but we'll be going north here. Okay. Coming up to a relative high point, it looks like. That's what that triangle is? Yeah, I'm so guessing. if it takes less, if there's less room, or if the contours are more spaced out, it's um, not as steep. Yeah. And then this is in the middle, so this is relative to the rest is all the same, and then this will be a more steep island kind of yeah in that that zone good for another 20. roger yeah. so, so if the distance between sure. the lines is wider it is steeper no it's less steep it is less steep right? yeah. so it really drops off to the left okay okay thanks for that explanation mia no worries. I'd always love to talk about maps. <laughs> <laughs> I meant to, we were talking about getting a 3D view for us to look at as we went up, and I totally forgot to get that. Yeah, a lot of our viewers mentioned they like um, kind of learning about maps as well, so definitely always happy to hear your insights. Were you on the shift that helped map this area before we... Fish. Oh, fish? Yeah, on the seafloor. It's n it was more towards the left. Yeah, I think I saw it in the corner. Yeah, I'm not sure what it was. There. Can we have a quick zoom on the fish? Sure. Ooh. Go ahead, Jana, if you, can, if you got it now. Got control of that machine over there? I do, just still trying to figure a couple things out, but I can do. Yeah, a macro urid again. Is that one of the hicks? Is that the, it's not the rat tail, right? It is oh, in the same is. family, okay. in the same family. Fits in with the spooky vibes. <laughs> <laughs> he has such googly eyes, though. <laughs> Cute and spooky. <laughs> Is that good? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Absolutely. Sorry, you I got go involved then. You can uh, move him another 20. Yeah, we Atlanta has moved like four meters. So we let it swing in. And now we have to move, you know, 40 meters to get the Atlanta to go at all. Yeah, so, yeah, if we keep it moving a little more, we won't. Uh, oh. We won't have such a, we want the layback. But not a huge layback. So if it's not as big of a layback, it doesn't swing in as fast. And we get a little more time to... Not the species problem, just leave it in. The distance from the vessel to Atlanta. Sweet. Uh, 
Yeah, moving on Lantos. Part that doesn't always behave. It's a bad ROV. This one, I think I have it figured out. It kicks my butt. No sedimentation is a big issue for coral reefs, at least in Guam. Like, and then it becomes this uh, terrestrial conservation issue as well because the trees help stabilize the sediment and prevent erosion. Um, and then, some if you have repeated wildfires, sometimes like we do, then you know those plants die away. This the soil just washes away into what we call badlands, and then like. All that soil washes and, and Into the smothers leaves. the corals. Yeah. yeah. So. Do you have like a lot of wildfires in Guam for the around in the coastal yeah, area? Yeah. So like dur we have a dry season and a wet season, and during okay. the dry season there'll be you know fires, and some of them are smaller and some of them are larger. But um, it's um, uh, our forestry department says that all the fires are human caused. Yeah, They're it's not, about to ice Yeah, because it's like. I forget the exact reasons. Um, our fire chief is so amazing. She like mm -hmm. knows all the science behind fire, but um, there was something maybe with like the humidity yes. um, and uh, really the fires are either set by um, like for hunters. For agricultural purposes and for... Yeah, so actually not for agriculture because it actually doesn't benefit the soil, but okay. like hunters, if they set fire, then like the, the deer will run out. I know, right? yeah. So then it's like easier to catch. Yes, and sometimes even uh, in uh, they have like they do controlled fires to maintain grassland. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, that too. Communities. Yeah, I think they have like they set up what they call fire breaks, mm -hmm. um, so that if there is it a fire, it doesn't spread. spread. Yeah, and there's other causes too, like the war caused a lot of deforestation yeah. and um, other stuff related Accidental to. Accidental fires. Yeah. Good for another twenty. Well, it's definitely directly related we to terrestrial issues. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Mm -hmm. Even on the very local issue, I mean, you could have one property development it doesn't look like that isn't though. managed right. correctly, and if there's a large rainstorm, you have a, a great amount of runoff, yeah, yeah. which has, a, has an immediate impact to near shore coral reefs. Absolutely. Yeah. And also, yeah. mangrove ecosystems are also very uh, sensitive to changes they have What's huge up? ecosystem functions but are also yeah they also need like a scent they have like a balance they need sediment yeah, input I but also i usually just put the mouse much. on it nutrients leave the mouse yeah. there because me yeah i think one of the biggest but one I, of the big I challenges we face in near shore conservation is that there. no matter how much you, uh, um, no matter how many protected trail areas you put in the Usually ocean, a green if we don't control on. and regulate what we do on land, it will yeah, still be affected. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I noticed. That is, that I think is the... You have to bring that layer yeah, to the front or something. Yeah, everything's connected, right? It's just that you can't, you can't isolate and protect and then keep the status quo to strife, whereas everything around it is being destroyed and exploited. Or maybe it's just because I haven't moved. Yeah, but it's a it's an overlay setting. It's one of the trying to pull the background into the thing or something, I don't know, which is. Yeah, this reminded no, me of my to be masters of. Uh, thesis project, which was on the planktons, the <laughs> infamous <laughs> planktons, but <laughs> the interesting part was I was comparing the phytoplankton uh, diversity and uh, community structure in the mangroves. It's in one of the other layers of including it. The mangroves, which are highly exploited, which has a lot of boat uh, traffic and in more in co and compare those to more pristine uh, areas and there were certain phytoplanktons which then we complain and uh, turn the bathymetry to black because remain associated we don't need with the roots the of the mangroves and require phosphorus so there's a chemical biochemical chain to it and it was amazing like 
slight change slight changes in Anderson channels and how different the community can be wow yeah that's super interesting i assume like sediment also absolutely uh, changes the light yeah. and then like salinity sediment and pollution in the water yeah different kinds of chemical pollution Polluted. effluence from the bigger cities because everything's coming in water and flowing out into the right. boat activity oil spillage from smaller boats fishing mm. boats motor like smaller motorized boats mm. Yeah, a piece of grease there. Roger. Can you come down uh, five meters? Okay, you can push in a bit there. Ah, oh, come on, Herc. So now the one of the back black corals uh, looks like the Parantipathes genus. And we can see how the polyps are very different in the black corals than in the octocorals. Uh, we can continue moving. Thank What's you so much. You got it? Mm -hmm. ID complete. Okay, yes. go away. Thanks. Thank you. There's a broken stalk of a bamboo coral. A couple of broken stalks. There's a fly trap and enemy. Oh, look at that fan hanging on the. Look at the angle they're extending. From the angle at which they're extending yeah. from the Looks ledge. Like, like almost perpendicular. Yeah. And to be able to. Sustain themselves in that angle, given the water current, water flow, and everything. Mm -hmm. They're all at that angle. Yeah. We're probably gonna spend a few minutes on the rock here, Matt. If you want to figure out your uh, snail trail thing. Yeah. You want to zoom? Yes, if possible. Sure. Thank you so much. Oh, there's also that white primnoid colony on the right, a couple oh, yeah. of them. Calyptrophora, the paracalyptrophora. Do you know when I show these pictures to Maria, I'm completely going to throw around these terms like I don't know <laughs> what I'm talking about. Absolutely. Well, they must have flow that goes down this slope or up. Exactly. Uh, it's kind of an isolated rock sticking up here. Yeah. Okay, you can uh, push in there. It's about as close as I can get. To There's some smaller recruits up there also. Look, there was a sponge as well. You're all right. It's just a ship bouncing it. Nose dives you, it looks like you're closer to the rock than you are. Sorry, I drifted back there. This one looks different from the other. The branching looks different from the other bamboo coals that we were seeing, right? Yeah, at least from the same goal. Yeah. Still, still seems internodal, but... Yeah, like, uh, Give us a second here. Yes, yeah, absolutely, yes. Herc to stop moving. I take my hands off the controls, it definitely doesn't move. Okay, you can uh, hold them there. Yes, looks like internodal branching. If I look at the thick branch more towards the right. But it's more 
br more branched or more brambly than the other ones. Uh, we are good. Yeah, we can. Okay, I can go wide. Thanks. Yeah, we're. You don't have any beams at the moment. Uh, look to your right a Thank little you. bit for me, Jacob. Does uh, Atalanta have a or yeah, Atalanta have a better camera than Argus? Because I feel like the visuals of Hercules are just so much clearer this year. No, just a better pilot. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. Uh, that Argus, makes a lot of sense. We Argus has agree. the same camera <laughs> as uh, Hercules, actually, which is currently uh -huh. on Little Zeus. Taking a holiday on the deck. Thanks for the good visuals, Jake. Dr. Ballard appreciates them. He likes to see his ROV. Yeah, <laughs> it's cool to look at. One little sponge. Yeah. Not many. No. Oh, there's a percentage. Finally. One percentage. Yeah. Finally. <laughs> it's two percentage, actually. Oh, yeah. On either side of the same. Yeah. Oh, and there's a sea star. And the sea star. Well, the, the diversity of this location. Yeah. Uh, back on the regular. <laughs> what, uh, three, five, zero. Yeah. A Goni asteroid, definitely. Yeah. Is that predating, we think? Soon as the we see that. Uh, sea star, yes. Yeah. Definitely. There's a small uh, parentipathies on the wall as well. Every time I see Brisinger, uh, the word uh, through my mind it goes Bazinga. <laughs> Bazinga. <laughs> you know, you said that out loud. <laughs> oh. I have a similar one. Um, every single time you say de demo sponge or demo sponge, yeah. right? It comes into my mind as demon sponge. Demon sponge. <laughs> you know, like I'm bad with remembering names initially when I learned about the percentages and I immediately like them a lot. But I could not remember the name. I used to remember like something that sounds like buzzing. I <laughs> think you're bad with names. There's a, a crab or a squat lobster on there as well. Yeah. There's also another sea star at the base of the... Oh, yeah, the little yeah, white one. Yeah, and there's something pinkish. Or pinkish? Uh, at the base of the colony, which is mm -hmm. uh, behind this one. This is a beautiful bamboo cora. So there's uh, a small ant as well. Magically in the uh, DSC as well there. Oh, yeah, yes. It's a good shot. Yes. I love the fat sea stars. Yeah. Is that a black coral in the corner underneath the... Yes. Yeah. The little, the little, uh, in the shadow mm -hmm. of the bamboo coral. There looks like a anthomastis or a pseudo anthomastis on this side of the rock as well. See the red. Do you think her, uh, I have my hands full. Yeah, right yeah, now, I saw. And the Munidopsis. This solitary one in the middle of the rock. The stalk, I mean the... The ship's going to move another 15 meters. Where is it? That's, uh, no, that's the Brisinjid. Brisinjid, yeah. yes. And the the Bazinga. <laughs> the Bazinga. And the <laughs> <laughs> Anthomasis is that small mushroom coral that's uh, on this side. We can... I oh, yes, yeah. yes, I see. Well, this is just a bustling metropolis of diversity <laughs> yes. compared to what we've been seeing. Yes. They're all sticking together because it's, it's too creepy around and here. There's something, <laughs> a whip. There's a whip at the center. Oh. Oh, yeah. I see it. Yeah. Can we a black coral report? 
So. Bring your head to the right, so for me. What's up? Yeah, you can come around with it. Are we good here? Yes. Um, Just resting for a minute after all that. Finally got a toe hold there on the. Gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> uh, do you think it will be possible to zoom in on that whip which is at the center? That's why we. That's why we landed here. Oh, great! Thank you. Circle. You wanted something up here. This one. Yeah. Which is at the center, and uh, we can have a closer look at the sea star feeding on the bamboo coral as well, if we have time, or we can... I think we have time. Okay. Great. We'll have to pay for it on the other end, you know that, but... <laughs> Go ahead, Jaina. Bazinga. That's all I got to the right, so... I can't believe you saw that because of the dark color and the <laughs> dark background. I don't know, I saw that something was dark but not shifting. That looks from a distance like a uh, black coral, but I'm not sure it can be. Yeah, the skeleton looks very black. Yeah. Oh, you're looking at the, I see what you're looking at. Yeah, it's camouflage. Go it falls in there if you can. Yeah. All the black corals we've seen have been small. Yes, sometimes we have the very large Leopathes fans, but um, do you think it's this one? Lilipathes? I, I mean, yeah, that looks that looks sort yeah. of similar, but we'll have to get a closer look. Did you get your uh, oh. DSC there, Hans? Tina is in yeah, chat and says probably periapathes. Peri 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 yeah. Is that what you were saying? No. Oh. It's in the same uh, we're gonna family. We're going to zoom in on this uh, sea star here now. Uh, Go ahead and push in there. And the oh, yes, there are some. I saw another one when we were on the way, but I didn't want to give a tally for Jake. <laughs> <laughs> it can be. But it looks the coloration looks more similar more to the other one you showed me. Yeah. So prickly. But yeah, and this is an associate on the sea star. Yes, that little green, yellowish yeah. thing. Probably a, I don't know, some sort of a amphibole or something. Mm -hmm. There's some hydroids in the sediment in the background. What's that? Right. And apparently that is a pest on the yes. sea star. Yes. Mm. Okay. Great. Thank okay. you. Okay. Thank you. Our pleasure. Mm. Oh, so you mean it's like a parasite? It's a parasite, or? yeah. Oh, wow. A parasite. Yeah, I was trying to remember the word parasite was blanking out. <laughs> it's a pretty good movie. <laughs> I haven't watched it yet, actually. I want to watch it. But there's too another... Too much coral and thing. she blanked out. It's a bigger black one. <laughs> <laughs> That's another one of the... Black coral? Yeah. Some pathies, but we'll figure out which one will be zoom in. It, this one looks more like a bathypath. Yeah, it's more uniform. Yeah. The singular but branches coming out. They can be tricky. Yeah. Okay, you can fill your boots there. Stay here. Also, did they change the name of bathypathies? I think some I think of them probably zoom has in. been moved into a new genus. Fill your boots, sorry. That means, yeah. uh, like, class I that means. That means zoom in. <laughs> Classifications. Can go uh, full. We'll do a Not polyp zoom alternate here. branching. Get a good uh, center right in our face there. Reminds me of like a, a pine tree, <laughs> the shape. 
Oh yeah, I was wondering what it reminded me of. I can see that because it's a black coral, then um, left here, right? the this tentacles are here. along Keep those branches in instead of this being like rounded polyps, mm -hmm. and the mouths are on those branches, on the, along those lines. So there's a mouth, there are tentacles, and again a mouth, then the tentacles. It continues like a series or a row. It What's looks like a Hawaiian fern called hapu. Yeah. Oh yeah. I was gonna say. It looks they like, look a like fern. fern. Yes. There was a little tiny something on the top, on the main, right there. Oh yeah, good eye. Little, little, oh, little critter. Oh yeah. You're right. Something. Somebody found a home. Is there a way we can get a view of like the very tip of the top of the coral? That, that'll help us ID which one it is. Roger. Chase it around here in the breeze. That one? Yes. Now is that the alternate? I'm not too sure the difference between alternopathies oh, and bathopathies. But yeah. Other than the name indicates alternate branching. Alternate branching. What, what did you just say? Mm -hmm. uh, Tina was saying to zoom on the tip to try yeah, to get an ID. Yeah, but after that, what you said. Oh, uh, alternopathies. Uh. Yeah, so there's bathypathies, alternopathies. There's tons of different black corals that kind of look similar to this one, but um, alternopathies, I think, has alternate branching, which helps you indicate which is which. Yes. Bathypathies has seems more uniform. Oh, yeah. And, um, yeah, still. You've been, you've been hanging around Steve too long. <laughs> Not enough. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. This okay, yeah. so bathopathy pseudo alternata. Yeah, this doesn't look uh, alternopathy. No. This looks bathypathy. And the alternopathy generally has a more curved tucked in. Are you good? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Go in video. Thank you. Gonna, uh, while we're here, I'm going to drop down the cliff. Roger. You'll we'll have to open the iris a little for us. Like, okay. like a little kid, oh, I see a cliff. I just want to jump off. And what, mm -hmm. hemicralia maybe? Yeah, That's probably. Seeing some different corals. We're seeing more, we're starting to see uh, more diversity here on the ledge. Some sponges, lots of bamboo corals, there is a small fly trap anemone. Uh, stalked or I'm not sure whether that's stalked. The angle isn't the best. It has the primnoid fans. That's probably about, uh, what, 10 meters down? You're good can't come down, you'll hit the top yeah. up there. Yeah, that's a good drop or off. Or you would get dangerously close. Well, that's a beautiful view of the... Is that a bolosoma? Yeah, the bolosoma is. Let me check. All of them are hanging on the... Hanging almost perpendicularly from the ledge. Uh, that's about as far down as I can go without moving the ship. Looks like it goes another... Uh, okay. Maybe 13, 15 meters under us, so hard to say. Come 
back up and uh, move another one two guys are up yeah tell me when right this is bushy okay I think there are some ophiroids, the red, yeah, the red ones look like ophiroids on the bamboo corals. When you get the samples up, do you also notice like even tinier creatures that we can't see on the screen, like embedded in the tissue or polyps or, you know, on them? Because I know at least for shallow water, like, algae has like tons of little tiny things living in it that you would never see in a video but if you put it in like a bucket and shake the algae like tons of stuff falls out, out yeah. yeah that's what it would be so much fun to see yeah <laughs> we yeah even on the geological samples yeah. like, oh, okay. we didn't see anything you know wow. on the live stream while we were collecting it but when they came up there was like um a small brachiopod show on one of the oh, rocks last cool. night um, so yeah, you never know what you're gonna see. Sometimes there's very teeny tiny brittle stars. Wow. Um, yeah, so there's always more than we can see at the first glance. Yeah. Usually. Like I'm wondering how much stuff is like small and living in here that we just can't see. Oh, absolutely. We're seeing some uh, small uh, pseudoanthomastids. I think we're seeing some of these. Does it look like we're seeing these sponges here? Or do they look different, the kind of fan shape? Thin sponges. Oh, yeah. Can't really make out the shape from this particular image. Yeah. Is it like this one? Yeah, that, that's the sponge of interest yeah. there. Yeah. I'm that's not good. sure. I'm not sure if you're seeing those. Is it a small corallium or a hemicorallium recruit? Yeah, it looks like it. Yeah. And between this the one. primnoids. Yeah, between the primnoids. This is a beautiful sponge. It's the biggest one we've seen so far, yeah. right? Yeah. I like the. Nobody's home. It's no. an empty condo. Oh, yeah. <laughs> prime real estate. Sponges sponging. <laughs> I was just going to say prime real estate. Oh my gosh. Taylor yeah, and yeah. we're always. <laughs> Reading each other's yep. minds. Is push that it, a, is push that in a, there if you want. A siphon for? I can't tell what that is. Can't can't loading up. Yeah, I can't deliver the siphon for or just some mucus that's floating by. I'll zoom in a bit. I got excited. I thought it was like a sea dragon maybe, but it just looks like a floating interesting. something. Yeah. I don't know it's what not that a is. Salt, is it? Just because nobody's home doesn't mean someone doesn't live there. <laughs> totally. It kind of looks like the siphonophores is mm. Not sure what it is, honestly. That mm. is kind of interesting. Yeah, yeah it's like it's like it could be a colonial organism. Yeah. yeah. Definitely colonial. Very beautiful color. Fuchsia. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Another brisinged. Bazinga. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, does anybody in the chat but has any idea that's what that is? Yeah, I got some good captures. Thanks, Dan. I can follow that it's for like hours. Something's so. flowing on the extensions. Wow. Okay, can go wide. Thank you. We need some of those archaeological terms that you're using, yeah. the DMP, but for oh, right. biology. Mm -hmm. Right. Disarticulated floating organism. Yeah. <laughs> it's a DFO. <laughs> <laughs> that one's going to stay a cunt. Do you know it's just a weird thing? Under the cave is set. Overhang. Yeah. Eerie. Uh, 
camera, the view from that. I keep forgetting what that camera is called. Let's, uh, camera. let's try and move to the north, and see if we can go along that feature a little. The north. You have the corals growing under the, yeah. the ledge again here. Oh, kind talking of to you. Well, we saw yeah. the other seamount. Sorry? Oh, um, we have some of the corals growing under the yes, ledge again yes, here. So yes. that's kind of cool to and see. And this is literally like upside down. These are hanging yeah. almost upside down. Was that on Nowden or it was on the one right before this? I think the one right before this with the dramatic um, yeah. landscapes, yeah. we saw some upside we saw down some. corals. Yeah. And we, we have seen them in uh, the Lorden Sea Mount as oh, well. Oh, yeah. Well, that's a beautiful capture. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What's the, the orange stuff there? Is that the another, it's similar to what we saw? The DFO. DFO. <laughs> <laughs> Tino to confirm that... Uh, What's the orange DFO there? And now it's an orange DFO. So Wherever disarticulated. Yeah. All right, we're going to move 20 like meters north. Right. Okay, I can push in a bit Why there. is there something more pinkish on top of the bamboo Oh, yeah. We'll get the pink and the orange. Yeah. Two for there's definitely okay, some hydroids growing on that. It's a dead, mostly a dead uh, skeleton. The pink can be... So oh. I'm dead. I'm not sure. I don't... Um, I can uh, get a little closer here. Give me a second. Mm. Yes, thank you. Yeah, I wonder if the, the kind of diversity we saw on the underside is, you know, that's not a sedimented side, that's the underside. And you have the sediment on top. I don't know if that affects things. Maybe well. it's yeah. preventing them from attaching. The current was flowing uh, from right to left along that cliff there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That kind of... I was just coming up and Hercules was drifting to the left. Seems to be going the other way here, so we'll go figure. Said. Could have been the tether. There's a lot of hydroids definitely growing, the more uh, tree like things, spiky things, brownish. But the pink can be some remaining life tissue on the bamboo coral that's still alive. That's what it probably looks like on the top yeah. here. Yeah. And But on this side, there are definitely zoanthids growing because they don't look like octocoral polyps, the ones on these branches. Yeah, uh, no. More yellowish. Yeah. Or can be stoloniferans. Yeah, I think they're stoloniferans and then possibly zoanthids, but these look these like leftover look, polyps Yeah, to me. these look like zoanthids, the one on the right. Yes, and then these, the pink yeah. colored ones are the leftover polyps. Can be the leftover polyps or can be the uh, stoloniferan corals as uh, well. Ah, okay. Overgrowing them. Because they look a little bit thicker for the bamboo yeah. coral polyps that yes, we have. Yes, they do. You have five meters left? Yes, yeah, so right. those are probably still in there. Yeah. And you well, there's a lot them? going on here on exactly. this skeleton. And like Tina mentioned a while ago, it looks like a zoo, this particular skeleton. Oh, Did yeah. you want to see the orange? Tina yeah. says still in there also. Right. Okay, that's good. Can be the bamboo corals as well, I'm not sure. Is the orange? Almost okay. looks uh, man made. Yeah, it looks like a piece of like net or something. Yeah. Let's see if I can suck it into my thruster and if it <laughs> tangles the thruster and aborts the dive, it's <laughs> definitely <laughs> man made. <laughs> we should achieved. Oh, it does look like there's knots in it. Yeah, it, yeah, it looks. Knots. Oh yes, yes, it looks like a piece of net. net. That's sad. Very sad. Is that the full zoom on it? No, but I don't know if I could. Okay. If we yeah. full zoom, it'll, it'll be. Uh, well, full zoom, and we'll show you what it looks like. It'll be out of focus, Shaky. probably. Have you guys ever taken a sample of something that you thought was... Go ahead, Jaina. Close it. Interesting and then realized it was just garbage? No. Oh, yeah, that's that definitely it. looks like net. Mm -hmm. Shame. That is very 
sad. What depth is this? 2,300. Yeah. Is this the type of net that would be... Uh, okay, can go in. Like Virginia's research with the trawling? No, it's it's not hefty enough. Trawling will be bigger. And do we know if this seamount has been trawled? And that the dive plan? I'm not seeing anything yeah. about that, uh, that, could that have being drifted an objective for, uh, like the other dive. That, uh, that could have drifted for 100.